Good evening and you welcome to the business edition of PM Express. You know, some have said that they would be the biggest casualty of this COVID-19. Already, some of them are struggling. And what will be their fate at the end of the day? On the business edition of PM Express, you're looking at the fate of the hospitality sector after this COVID-19. Will they survive the storm or they'll be beaten up that they will have nowhere to find? Some people have said that it is indeed the biggest contributor, one of the biggest contributors to the economy, the fourth actually. But will they have that same position when the dust or the dust actually settles after this coronavirus? Some are saying that listen, it will be a bad time for them. But we are trying to look at post this COVID-19. What should we do to them? What will be the business modeling? Will things change or not? Well, I'll be speaking to the Minister of Tourism who will be joining us on this discussion. Also, we have in-house uh, guest. She's here with us. She manages a jam rock, somebody who actually manages the hotel and the pub business as well and travel and tours. So on the business edition of PM Express, looking at post-COVID-19, the faith of the hospitality sector, would they survive or they will be consumed? All this and more on the business edition of PM Express. Welcome back to the business edition of PM Express. And we are looking at post COVID 19. What will be the fate of this sector? They say they are, and we believe they are the fourth contributor to the economy. But would that be the same after this whole issue settles or they are still going to struggle? We'll be looking at engaging all these players in the sector when it comes to the pub business, when it comes to the restaurant business, when it comes to the hotel business and travel and tours. And we bring in those who manage the space, regulators, or let's call it government, in terms of what they are doing to ensure that at least the sector that is believed to be the fourth biggest contributor to the economy survives this coronavirus, or they would be consumed. Welcome to this program. And, and, and as the program goes on, I'll bring in my other guests to join us via Zoom or via virtual platforms in terms of us having a good discussion here. And let me introduce my guest in here, Madam Olympio. She manages uh, Jam Rock. And uh, uh, let me declare my, my, my stance here, because I, I come to the place, even though you don't see me, a lovely place at this Ligon. And, and, and for you, I mean, is it that we are exaggerating when we talk about the fact that, listen, the sector has been badly hit? Especially, let's look at your case. You manage a restaurant, a pub, yes. and then some live jam, uh, reggae music, right? Yes. On the weekend, it used to jam. Yeah. It's quite very, it was very quiet lately. Um, the sector has suffered a blow, a massive blow, even in the best of times. Mm -hmm. Running a restaurant is an arduous task. It is hard work so when you have these dynamics all playing against you we are we are practically the, the rug has been slipped mm. beneath from beneath you mm. um, the first thing you have to think of is how do I mitigate these losses mm. what can I do immediately to stop the bleeding staff employment we've let go about 80 to 90 percent of the staff and remember we do employ a lot of people and that's because skilled labor is hard to come by. Mm. And in this industry, you need to train and invest in a lot of training. So good restaurants do invest in training. And that is tra that's another part of the investment they put in there that is not immediately seen, but then the customers feel the impact. They get to enjoy the service. So there are some places, some restaurants. We have the National Hospitality um, Association of Ghana, where there's a group of about 70 restaurants and pubs so far and we are still encouraging everyone to come on board so that we can put the message across in a unified voice to government to create an enabling environment for us to grow back or mm. else it will be a total collapse do you see yourself being an active business post COVID 19 if the environment the enabling environment is created for instance rent in as much as um, there's a law that says rent mm. should not be uh, paid more than six months in advance, you have landlords who really don't care because the law can't chase them. So you're going to be still uh, uh, looking at paying a rent pegged to the forex and working and plating your prices in CDs and struggling to meet up to it. So now we need to find a way to be able to speak to the private sector. Landlords are in the private sector. Mm. I don't know how government is going to be able to mitigate that. 
whether they give in incentives for landlords to hold on with property rates for a mm. period of three to six months. We understand government needs the, the consolidated fund and they get this money from us yeah. paying taxes, yeah. but we don't even have the money now to pay the taxes. We are losing capital that has been invested over a period of time. Mm. Elizabeth Olympio, uh, Emmanuel, actually, she manages Jamrock. Let's connect to our guest via the virtual platforms. Uh, Kwame Goka is the chief executive of uh, Twist Group, also uh, Dance, Dance Travel and Tours, and also the managing director of the GM of uh, Mevin Peck via the virtual platforms. Lady, uh, gentlemen, and also be connecting with the Minister of Tourism, uh, welcome to the business edition of PM Express. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Let me bring in Kwame. Uh, we know we want to move on because of the fact that, listen, Corona has come. What is next? But night's life, it looks like it won't be the same for you again, right? Well, first of all, let me say um, congratulations to yourself and your team for 25 years. And um, I want to welcome uh, Gideon, uh, Nan, and Honorable Jesse, thank you for um, showing up. Um, I, if, if we have to assume that this is the new world order, then um, it's safe to say that those of us that are in business at the moment and have been affected, um, carry out, start planning and carrying out measures to, um, with, with, with the current epidemic and how we roll out of it. Um, to support a few things um, Elizabeth said, um, Let's, let me take it a step further and say, saying that the government so far has done a good, decent job to, to, to help um, support the, um, the people. Now, it comes to the industry, and like she said, everyone globally is affected, so this is not news. Um, every industry is affected, schools are affected, so it's not a situation of us just waving a flag and saying, hey, hey, hey. Yes, we're waving a flag for the industry, the entertainment industry, the hospitality industry. And, um, and it's, it's time to talk about um, measures we're going to take in place. Regarding my business, Twist the Nightclub, um, I, I'm fortunate enough to say that I haven't let anyone go. Um, I, I have a, um, also moral obligation to my staff. You know, I, I, the business started in a very organic way. So um, today I paid salaries, you know, um, I, I took it down to 60%, but I paid salaries last month and I paid salaries today. Um, but we have been affected in terms of rent. We still have rent, which, which, which is a matter of, um, it's, it's something that has to be discussed. But we have to be realistic when we're asking government to um, uh, uh, come in and uh, 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 take over all these burdens because the government themselves are burdened. So, so I think that uh, as, in, as, as much as it's, it's good for us to, to set up an organization to support the industry, rather than ask, I think it's, it's a good enough time to have a dialogue with the government and see what both parties can do mm. to help support mm. each other. Mm. Mm. Kwame, I mean, I, I like the optimism, Kwame, but I was still want to come back to you later and get from you in terms of going forward and what will be changing for you because uh, I don't see plenty of cars again in front of your place with lots of people queuing to come in, and that's a big... But the Minister of Tourism... <laughs> The Minister of Tourism is also uh, with us in this discussion. And I'll be coming to her after listening to a round of all the players about what she make of these challenges and whether indeed this sector will still continue to be the fourth biggest contributor to the economy. Um, let me go to the managing director of uh, Mervyn Pick. I'm sorry to say that you belong to a chain. So maybe, listen, let's leave you. There's no problem for you. Your shareholders will come here and help you out. But I, I wish that will be the case. But again, congratulations with your 2050, first of all, and uh, greetings to all valuable guests, honorary minister. Uh, of course, I mean, we, we are part of a big chain. Uh, we have over 5,000 hotels all over the world, 5,100 uh, hotels to be precise. But uh, mo like most of the other chains, we were uh, affected. Uh, I mean, uh, highly affected of this because, you know, the, the, the first uh, industry is being affected, always the travel industry and entertainment industry, hospitality industry, because people cut their costs 
uh, entertainment costs, travel costs, hospitality costs. But because of this uh, pandemic, unfortunately, this, this happened very, very fast. Um, and I agree with Kwame. I mean, looking at the picture, uh, I would like to congratulate government taking uh, very fast decisions to lock down the country and taking uh, very good measures. I mean, uh, looking at the, uh, um, I mean, developed countries all over the world, seeing how they are affected terribly. So I think we are in a very good situation. I mean, the, the most important thing in, in the world is health. First of all, we need to be healthy. Uh, because uh, we have a life to live. Uh, we will overcome this, uh, obviously. Everything will pass, and uh, we will do our job. But again, we're going back to uh, uh, business effect of it. I mean, we have, of course, over 400 team members. We, have a, we are a big family, and they have families. So, of course, uh, we have thousands of uh, uh, children. I mean, uh, uh, wives, husbands, brothers, sisters are being affected because of our, our business. I mean, we were running over 70 percent occupancy uh, before uh, the, the incident occurred, the pandemic occurred. But, and then we went uh, straight down to 3 percent occupancy right away. And uh, giant businesses like us, we have tremendous costs. Uh, we are bearing, uh, we have energy costs. I mean, we have a huge land, 65,000 square meter land. Um, you can guess the water, the energy we are consuming. Of course, uh, this is uh, this is kind of a, a survival period for for, for us. Uh, we are we are trying to survive without with all our team members this period, so uh, we can get back to our business as soon as possible. But having said that, uh, our business affected in a different way, so we will have to change our way of business when we get back to business. Uh, especially hygiene standards. I mean, we will definitely have a different world after after uh, the pandemic ends. Hopefully, when we have the vaccine or when when the things gets better. So we already started that. We, we have hand sanitizers, mask, special cleaning, fumigation, social social distancing, um, a buffet setups. Uh, we are doing our best uh, uh, to keep our team members, staff, employees and guests healthy. Mm. So uh, this is this is a period which we are uh, unfortunately terribly affected in terms of revenue and profit. Uh, we hope uh, we will pass this period uh, with the support of our, all our partners. And hopefully during this time, most of our uh, partners, business partners supported us. We are supporting them in terms of payments, uh, you know, waiving charges, delaying payments and so on. So uh, I'm uh, I'm optimistic. We will, of course, also I'm realistic, but I'm optimistic we will pass through this. Mr. Adnan, let me let me come in and look at the fate of the human capital here. In terms of all these restructuring yeah. that you're doing, what will happen to me, George Yafe, if I am a waiter at Mervyn Pick? Would I still yeah. have my job? Do I have my job as we speak right now? Are you paying me, or maybe George go yeah. and sit home? I'll get back to you. Yeah. No, uh, we are currently paying, and uh, of course. Uh, we, we have a limit. I mean, uh, nothing is endless, but we will do our best to keep our team members as long as we can uh, to pass this uh, time. So this is our priority because we will we will need our team uh, after this period because we have a. I mean, this hotel Mavampik has been there for over almost 10 years, and most of our team members been working and paying uh, uh, attention to their businesses. They were highly committed. And we are we have the team on place, and we are doing our best to pay them. Mm. Gideon, um, Asari, you are in a a travel business, and I know nobody wants to travel. I've seen certain companies that actually their partners have written to them to cancel these travels. For for you, I mean, do you see your business and empire crashing because of this? Yes, George. Um, thank you. The impacts on the travel and tour is, is very great. And as, as my uh, co-panelists described their impacts, you know that it's integrated. Um, as travel agency, we, we, we are agency, so we, we are in the middle and we have the restaurants, we have the hotels, we have the airlines, we have the immigration. So all of them, all of their impacts are on us. 
So let me give you um, um, a typical example to, to understand how travel agencies are affected. So from January, we, we started uh, planning a tour um, um, hosting a group of um, almost 30 from Indiana University. So they are going to stay in Ghana for um, 30, um, 28 days. And so from January, we, we started doing the planning. That would mean that we will contact hotels, we work with the airlines, we work with the bus companies, and we arrange everything. And that business was worth um, about 100,000 um, US dollars, so um, which is about 580,000 Ghana cities. And um, because of COVID in March, they wrote to us to cancel the trip. Now, the, you can imagine, so as they've written us to, to have to cancel the trip, we have to write to the hotels to cancel. They were going to stay at about three different hotels. They were going to uh, eat at several restaurants within their 28 days stay in Ghana. Um, they were going to be driven through. Um, so you can imagine the impact. All this money that will have come into the country so that it will be shared across board and whatever is left, it will be used to also pay staff salaries so that the staff also go back to their families and you go to the supermarket and buy stuff for the families and we feed them. So the chain, um, that is how the chain in, in our industry works. So our impacts, apart from even the, the, the economic loss, you also have to deal with, um, you have to negotiate with the, your partners, like the hotels, or the, the things that you paid in advance on behalf of the client. And they are also in crisis, and they may not have the money readily available for you to pay back your client who have canceled their trips. So I would say that um, many at times um, the travel agencies, we, we, uh, we are more affected by, than any other because we tend to absorb all the pressure coming from the other agencies. Mm. And coming back to Adansi Travels, um, we have 20 staff and um, um, these 20 staff rely on this business to take care of their families. And if you had to cancel all our trips, um, you can imagine. So since March, um, that's about seven weeks now, we had to take the decision to close the office um, temporarily so that um, you will reduce costs in terms of uh, bills and other things. But even by doing that, we still have a toll bill to pay. We still have to pay salaries. We have 20 staff. We can't just tell them to go home and wait till COVID is over. That would be unfair on our part. So we have to continue to engage this while they are home. Are, we, are they going to be relevant after COVID? It will depend on us. We have to engage them on training programs. So all this come at cost. So they have to time with Zoom, spend credit, train them so that by the time COVID is over, they will still be relevant in the industry. And they will still have the capacity to serve our clients. So the impact on us as agencies, as travel agencies, is really, really great. And we, we, very, we wish that um, there will be some uh, packages that will help alleviate this so that we can continue to keep these um, staff um, across all the agencies that are suffering. And one other thing is also that is already mentioned is um, the rents. Um, okay. As you, you are not going to the office, but okay. you, every month you are, you are counting your rent. Uh, okay. Last week when I had to go to the office and print something, uh, once I entered the building, then I remember my, my, my rent is due to expire in May. And okay. we need to okay. pay another rent. Okay. So this, this is the volume of impacts um, that we are experiencing. Let me move to the Minister of Tourism. And Madam, one would ask that how fast are you moving to actually stop the cancerous cell from moving, spreading all over the substantive industry? Thank you very much. Unfortunately, 2020 has started on a very bad foot for the industry. Last year, we finished on a very high note with a year of return registry in um, very good profits for, for all our stakeholders across the, the value chain of the industry. And we have planned to have even an even better cash hit, and then um, the industry is on its knees. All the operators are suffering. 
government recognizes um, this situation because government itself has identified the sector as very important for economic transformation. It is for that reason that a lot of emphasis was put on the sector in the previous years, and for which reason we were registering the group. Government is taking is taking steps to address all these issues. We have engaged um, Sorry, it looks uh, like we're having a little bit challenge, madam. If you can hear me. She plays various um, meetings have been held through the Ghana Tourism Authority. It, it looks like we are having yeah, a... several. It looks like we're having a little bit challenge with the connection of the Minister of Tourism, but she's oh, trying to with all this. Sorry, you're having a little challenge there. We'll try and reconnect to the Minister of Tourism. Uh, she's trying to make a point about what government is doing. But you, you, you heard your other colleagues talk as well. Yes. And, and for you, is it like, okay, it's more of a bigger thing than I thought? Or you knew about that already? Well, you know, we laid off. When, now, let me clarify the term lay off. When you lay off staff, you are not terminating their employment. You call them back. Really? You, you, they are sitting Isn't at home. Isn't that a fine opportunity wait. to, to let, ask me to go? Home? Let me get to the point. Okay. They are sitting at home, but they get paid. Do you call that laying off? Everything. So we did 50%. So for March, okay. we said stay at home. Let's see how this core team. So out of, say, 50 people, 40 are sitting at home. Mm. And the 10 of us are struggling to work and get them paid. So. Mm. Eventually, we got 50% of them paid. Mm. But remember, the restaurant industry, the hospitality industry, it's like a manufacturing plant. Mm. There's, you take up raw materials, you work with so many dynamics, so many uh, uh, sectors to come together to put a finished product to the end, the final consumer. So all these costs, and you work on credit, mm. you work with the banks, you have facilities. Governments issued a caveat that the banks should hold off for a period of time. It's not. They are still demanding their pound of flesh. No. Oh. oh, yes. That's what you're are. telling me. Yes. The, None it hasn't of been you, your, your bankers one, haven't come for, to for you. For some of my bankers, one of them has actually held on with our But payments. others are but others doing are that. Not. Others have not. So why were they advertising and telling us that they're actually reviewing the, the loan payment for their clients? It's been reviewed. It hasn't been So affected. it has not happened as it you thought happened. earlier. It has not happened as yet. Wow. Utilities. You know, in the commercial industry, for, for instance, a restaurant, your ECG, your water, you pay twice or three times the price, a tariff than domestic. So these tariffs are still quite high. If these things are mitigated, if we can go back to a flat rate, taxation, if we can reduce taxation from a point to one point, this is where we you need to sit. You can break even. Breaking even is not going to happen. It, it's, it's, it looks like we're getting a communication that something is being done for the sector, but the situation on the ground is different. The situation on the ground is wow. cri critical. If you're working and you're already struggling to make make profit in a bright environment. Mind you, 80 to 90% of your revenue projected sales has been taken away from mm. you. It means you are catching up. You're playing catch up. You're trying mm. to stay relevant in a dire situation. Interesting. I'll be seeing whether I'll be getting, uh, we'll be able to connect back to the tourism minister and she was making a point and I'll get to the tourism minister to make the point about what government is doing and I'll get back to my other guest again, Goka, the Melbourne Peak Hotel, MD and the tra Dancer Travel and Tours also that in all these things, what is being done to stay alive? Revising the business module. If it's about the nightclub, I see people doing online stuff, uh, virtual DJing. If it's about the hotels, some are dropping their rates to the lowest. And I dance to travel. I don't know whether we can do a virtual travel. But let's get back to the tourism minister. She was making a quite critical point as on what government is doing to save the situation for these players. <coughs> but I mean, if you can hear me, I was just trying to find out from you. What is government doing now to ensure that the situation doesn't get worse? Because we knew or we heard that there was some uh, stimulus package being put together. Yes, initially, government has indicated that 600 million Ghana cities is being made available for the micro, small, and medium enterprises. 
across the country. And this will include also our um, enterprises in the tourism and hospitality industry. We have had a meeting with them together with NBSSI, which will be in the forefront of disbursing this fund. They have taken them through the processes. And once the investment starts next month, May, we believe that our, our operators within that target group will benefit from this facility. Aside from this, the ministry also has um, a tourism development project, which is a World Bank project which we are implementing. We have had an engagement with the World Bank. There is a grant component within that, which we are also looking at disbursing it to support the operators within this sector so that it will help them and tie them over during these months that operations have been really affected. So that, that is also another support that will be coming to the industry. Then government has also requested that we submit to um, government um, an impact study on our sector. Government is going to look at this impact study along with the recommendations which the industry has made to us um, regarding how they want government to support them. Some of this is in respect of um, um, levies and charges being waived. Some of it is taxes being waived, um, rent and, and money to pay staff and all that. Mm -hmm. So we have compiled this and we are going to submit it to government. Government is going to take a critical look at it, assess it and, and determine what it can do to support the industry. What we need to recognize is that the pandemic has affected businesses all across the country, not just the um, travel and tourism industry. So as government is looking at what it can do to support our industry, since we know that this industry is the one that has been significantly hit by the pandemic, it also has to look at the other sectors of the economy that have been impacted. Because once you do something for one sector, there is a tendency to have a ripple effect in other sectors of, um, of the economy. So you need to look at it holistically, determine what you can do, and um, make sure that when other sectors also put up a request in the same direction, how are you going to justify it? How are you going to um, ensure that you can do something special for one sector and justify why that cannot be done for a different sector? So government is going to take a holistic look at all the recommendations that have been made and see what it also can support with recognizing that government is also down losing money, losing revenue, because the entire economy has been hit by the pandemic. But I am confident that some relief will come to the industry. Besides these two that I have indicated, once we submit um, the recommendations that have been uh, made by the industry to the ministry. Ma'am, let's talk about the, the 600 million Ghana cities that will be spearheaded by the National Board for Small Scale Industry. And you're talking about the fact that some of the players in this sector will benefit from it. It's starting next Monday, next week or tomorrow. Uh, how soon will this disbursement be done? And how, how can someone like Jam Rock, uh, maybe uh, Goka might have too much money on his hands, so he doesn't need it, uh, and to travel, how soon can they access this fund? Yes, this fund is targeted at the micro, small, and medium enterprises. So it's for the operators who have, um, let's say, employees from one to a maximum of about 100 employees. That is the target of this fund. So it's going to be um, given out as, as loans, depending on the applications that you submit. It will determine how much you get. And it will be um, a moratorium period of one year and to be repaid over a two-year period. We have, it's going to be dispersed through the trade associations. So we have engaged all our trade associations, which fall within this target group. And they have had a meeting with the NBSSI, who has taken them through the processes. And they are going to assist um, their enterprises to apply for this funding. And um, NBSSI has indicated they are doing the processes now, and before the end of May, the investments will start. So before next week, the process will kick start, and they can... Will kick start, and definitely during the month of May, the investments to the qualified um, enterprises will happen. So I should make the application formally to NBSSI for them to run me through the process to get it? Exactly, and through your trade association. But, ma'am, apart from the disbursement of loans as well, 
There, there is talk about weavers. There is talk about policy support and all the rest. Uh, is your ministry looking at this area as well? Definitely, as I indicated, and um, we have received several proposals from um, the industry players regarding the kind of support that they would like to see coming from government. For instance, um, in respect of loan repayments, they want us to engage the banks to defer loan repayments. We know that something has been done in that direction, but it, um, it's, I believe it's only in respect of um, the loan itself, the principal payments, and, and, and not the interest. They want the entire um, loan repayment to be deferred. We are going to engage government to engage the financial sector in that regard. So there are several things that government has to do which it cannot do directly um, itself as government, but it has to engage um, other institutions. For, 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 for instance, um, we talk about rent, and rent is a private sector landlord that these operators owe the rent to. How is government going to engage these um, private sector um, landlords to ensure that they can agree on something to alleviate the situation that our operators find themselves in. So these are all discussions that government is going to have to ensure that we can deliver the reprieve that will help our, um, our enterprises to, su to survive during this very difficult period. And then post-COVID, we strategize on building the industry again um, mm. to where we want it to be. Mm. Um, this year, we had anticipated a very good year um, initiate, initiating the Beyond the Return in, initiative. Unfortunately, with this pandemic, everything is at a standstill. But I believe that um, by the middle of the year, when we are over this pandemic, we'll be able to double up and, and, and actually um, regain some of the momentum. Mm. I'll come back to you about, again, post-COVID-19 in terms of policy direction. But let me go to Kwame Goka. Um, Trust uh, CEO group. Some people see you more as the more of a middle class facility. So, are you interested in access or tapping into this? Or for you, it's all about the policy. So people can come out when people are, have good money in their pocket, they will spend, they will engage you. Um, to, to answer you, um, can I go back to the minister? Um, I've, I've just noticed something. It, it's very interesting how. All of us on here happen to be the low hanging fruit in business in Ghana. In terms of when it comes to taxes, you know where to find Twist. When it comes to taxes, you know where to find Jamra. When it comes to taxes, you know where to find November. When it comes to taxes, you know where to find the um, agents, the travel agencies. However, it's interesting that when the government put out, puts out these initiatives, it's always about the low sector. It's never about us. Meanwhile, we pay bulk of the taxes. So it, 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 it's very ironic that um, um, the minister mentions the 600 million initiative that's put for microfinancing and all that, but we all know that the tax system locally is structured in such a way that a lot of people in, in the micro in, in industry do not pay taxes. So those of us who carry the bulkhead of the load, I would assume that when you sit in the power room to discuss these initiatives, most of us are put at the forefront. Because likes like Mervyn Pick and like um, Elizabeth mentioned, some of us have massive loans being carried out. So and 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 and, and once everything starts rolling back up, it's my door. It's an Elizabeth's door. They come at the taxes. We can't avoid these taxes. But you go to the marketplaces. Most of them don't even pay taxes. People are running around not paying taxes. So um, I would love, and we would love that when it comes to these initiatives, we're also put forefront because. Trust me, um, it, I closed up, I, be, I believe, a week before um, we were all asked to shut down. Um, unlike um, Elizabeth, I just decided not to operate. I'm not a restaurant. I can't operate. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned um, uh, Goku might have a lot of money. It's got nothing to do with that. My business started a bit more organically and very small. And most of the guys that have come all the way with helped me build the system. I cannot leave them behind. So it's a moral obligation. So, so we are struggling, and that's just my approach to my business. That's not to say that we are not struggling. Uh, um, um, Elizabeth men mentioned about electricity. I believe that when it comes to all these things that hit us hard, our suppliers, we still have to pay them. I have drinks in my fridge that I still owe my suppliers. Mm -hmm. Luckily for me, I had, a, I had a deal with the owner of Imesco, and, and they've held back a bit. 
But guess what? If by the end of, say, another month, everything is lifted, it's going to take at least another two, three months before we can get into the, the, the you, you, you know, before the, the engines oiled up, before we get moving. Goku, so, let's, let's see whether I can get a quick response from the Minister of Tourism, and then I get back to you guys again. Um, thank you. I recognize um, um, his, I understand his frustration, and that is one issue that we are looking at. That is why we are working through the trade associations to identify the SMEs that are registered with these associations and with the Ghana Tourism Authority. They are going to get their, their support. And we also realize that these are small players. We target some initiatives to the small players and we target different initiatives to the to the upscale um, operators. So definitely, the fact that we have started with the disbursement of 600 million to these small operators does not mean that we are not looking at something for the bigger players. We are working on that as well. That is why we have obtained the feedback from them. We are going back to government because we recognize that they are bigger players, and therefore the interventions for them have to be more significant. And government really has to look at it and determine what it is going to do. Mm. There is a proposal to put up um, a post-COVID stimulus um, package for the bigger players to help them to operate and to come up again. And this is something that government is going to look at. It, it will require bigger amounts of money being disbursed to these operators. So the fact that we have put aside this 600 million targeting the SMEs, does not mean that government is not going to look at the bigger players. But the issue is that what they will require will be more significant. Mm. And government has to do some good work in order mm. to come up with something that will actually help them. It's, it's good that you're talking about big players. Let me go to Adnan. He's the general manager of Mervyn Pick. For you, is it more of regulations and policies than just handouts? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't get the... I'm saying the that for you, uh, is it more of the regulation being reviewed to favor players like you than handouts? Because I don't see Mevin Pig uh, putting an application for this support, right? Actually, we did. Uh, I mean, we applied to, uh, like, ECG, uh, Ghana, Ghana Revenue Authority. I mean, all the department agencies, we applied for support. Because uh, just like uh, Kwame mentioned and Honorable Minister mentioned as well, I mean... Uh, we interact with a lot of people. I mean, uh, we, okay, Mervampik is just a hotel with uh, uh, 260 rooms. We have 400 employees, but we interact with a lot of suppliers, beverage suppliers, food suppliers. So uh, we, this this affects thousands of people, maybe hundreds of thousands of people, just one hotel's uh, 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 business going down. So, of course, we applied for uh, all kinds of support to ECG, Ghana Water Authority, uh, GRA, um, uh, Social Security Senate, and so on. Of course, we would need uh, in in uh, I mean in one or two weeks later, we would definitely need support. I mean, we, this is a survival. I mean, it's it's, uh, it's beyond the sustainability at the moment. And um, and actually, being realistic, I don't see these things ending anytime near uh, soon, like two months, three months. Mm. As a hotel company, we are having weekly meetings, regional meetings. Uh, of course, we have hundreds of hotels in, in Africa, uh, and we, we, are, we are able to check what's going on in different countries. So, mm. I mean, the most optimistic scenario is the fourth quarter, maybe some kind of movement, mm. Mm. Uh, but not, not earlier than fourth quarter. We don't expect anything to happen before October, November. Mm. And that's, that's the optimistic scenario. I'm, kind of realistic, not, not really pessimistic. So oh. that's why, of course, we, within uh, one or two months, we definitely need support uh, to survive this process because uh, uh, we need to survive for our people. And of course, our people uh, need us to survive for mm. their families. Mm. So uh, mm. that's, a, that's a family business to mm. going on. So we definitely need and we apply, George. For all of you connecting us from homes, actually, it might be a good time to take a sip for your coffee or your tea and all those things because you're taking a short break yeah. and we'll be back and we're looking at the yeah. business module. Has it got to change? And for the Minister of Tourism, what else will government be doing to ensure that post-COVID-19 
the sector might even be the biggest contributor to the economy. Elizabeth Olympia is with me here in the studio, my guest virtually connecting to us from the Averro's homes. We'll take a break. This is the business edition of PM Express. We're looking at post COVID 19, what will happen to our hotels, our pubs, that favorite nightclub of yours that you used to go. Will it still be for there for you or not? We'll be back after this break. Welcome back to the business edition of PM Express. When you're looking at what will happen to the hospitality industry post COVID-19, are they going to survive or we see a lot of them going down? What is going to happen to nightlife in this country? What will happen to the weekend at the hotel, even at the beach and all those things? But we've also been hearing from government in terms of what they are going to do to ensure that indeed the sector doesn't really collapse. And we're moving on quickly as time might not be on our side to look at whether the business module is going to change. Let's get to a dance travel. And, and I don't know in your case, what would it be like when everything is settled? Yes, so George, the, the biggest challenge right now for every business is the uncertainty of when COVID is going to be over. Because you know, in in critical times like this, everyone is planning, and and one key ingredient of planning is time. So if you know exactly when COVID is going to be over, then you can plan yourself very well. But none of us know. We don't know whether it will be six months, it will be twelve months, or eighteen months. Now, even when COVID is over, um, travel will, will come gradually. Um, the business model will change. And for instance, one of the key um, source of income for industry is organized group tours. So when you organize group tours, you're able to make a better margin with a group. But when business resume, you want to um, limit that activity. You want to organize more of, um, we call it FIT, family and individual trips. Um, people will be um, more inclined towards trips that are having very less people so that they will reduce their risks. So every um, business will have to adapt to that. But then um, within this time, a lot of talk about virtual tours as a way of um, um, alternative way to get money. But uh, in fact, most of us as agencies, we have explored all these options right from first March. We've done studies, we check and it is not anything that can bring income. Well, virtual tours would be good to sustain the interests of our clients. Okay. But you can't compete with YouTube, you can't compete with Netflix and okay. um, Google okay. Earth and those free apps that somebody just go in and type um, Singapore or type Ghana and get all the images and pictures and videos for free. And what are you little agency going to put together around this time to compete? It's okay. not possible. Okay. Even if you charge $10, they will not come. So the, right now, what we are doing is to try to keep our staff um, in touch, train them, and prepare their minds and um, keep their skills up to date. And uh, management level also looking at um, doing ad hoc planning, mm. uh, doing scenario planning, that if business will resume in September, what am I going to do? If okay. it resume in December, what am I going to do? Okay. So in the interim, we need that support from government to be able to survive so that we can help plan and forecast the future. Okay. Thank you, Gideon. Hey, Kwame, in, in a minute, sorry. Uh, what next for you for Twist Legacy Group, Twist Nightclub? Okay. So um, at the moment, um, I, I have um, a production company and um, a record label as well but the production company we never la launched yet. Um, so at the moment, we, we started doing a bit of um, a, a bit more of our projects, and then we started a live session every Friday just to really engage. These virtual things that um, with the virtual parties and DJs is just to keep our people engaged client, online. Yeah. Yeah. There's really no way so far to make money. I, I, I know we've had suggestions of delivering drinks and stuff. That's just one aspect. How many drinks am I really going to deliver to a home at night to, to offset my lifestyle, my living, my family, my workers. It, it, it's really, it, it's a different world. If this is the new world order and we say, okay, moving forward, um, Corona's over, what do we do? We have measures put in place. 
Okay. Like um, Adnan mentioned in terms of sanitation, 100%. Then you have to look at how do, for instance, if you had to order okay. a drink, do you just hand out a menu? Or do you have um, a screen that's, um, uh, it's, that's cleaned up or everyone has, a, has like a, um, a software on your phone where the menus are on there so they don't have to touch? Then okay. we have this thing about masks in public places. Okay, if you're wearing a mask and you come into a club, how do you drink? Do you pull the mask down? Do you have a sip okay. in front of it? I mean, it, 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 it is yes, quite difficult it, for you. It, 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 so, so it's it's never going to be the same again. Okay, you know? okay. <laughs> Kwame, time is not on our side. Let me move to Adnan. In 30 seconds, Adnan, uh, post COVID, Nevin Pick, 30 seconds. Sorry? In 30 Sorry. seconds, what is next for you in 30 seconds? <laughs> Uh, next, I think uh, we will we will step into a different world, like Kwame uh, mentioned. I mean, we will try to adapt to a new new world of uh, like more technology involved, no key cards involved. Uh, like we we probably gonna install uh, I mean apps, opening doors, and I mean we were we were I mean we were uh, about to do that, but I think we will just uh, push it up uh, forward because we were not uh, I mean. We were not uh, thinking if the people is ready to for such kind of technology in the market, but we will have to do that. Okay. I mean, uh, hygiene is, is the most important thing in life, especially when you have a hotel, uh, almost three, 300 rooms, and we have a shopping mall, and there's thousands of people passing by. Uh, this is going to be a nightmare, but hopefully we will all overcome with Kwame, with Gideon, with all the tourism industry. We okay. will hopefully adapt. I mean, this is human being. We always adapt. But uh, when we are adapting, we will need support, of course. Madam Minister, do you think that you're going to do what you have to do to ensure this sector regains its position as the fourth or even the third or even maybe the biggest contributor to the economy? I'm wrapping up in a minute. Definitely, we are going to do that. And government itself is committed to doing that because it recognizes the potential of this industry to the economy of Ghana. I mean, the COVID-19 definitely presents a challenge for all of us. We know that for the rest of the year, we may not see high numbers coming in anytime soon. We have to look at, look within, I'll say. Maybe now we have to do more promotion of our domestic tourism to encourage our own people to travel around the country and enjoy the country such that um, our operators can also derive some, some benefits until the external travel picks up. So I think that somehow we'll strategize and manage to survive okay. and even get better results from the industry. Let me turn to you, uh, Madam Jam Rocker, for you. Um, would it be better? We, we were forced quickly to adapt to the changes straight from, right from the beginning of March. So we had to quickly change our model, look at um, putting in only dining out. Dining in was not an option. We had to quickly change it to a delivery service. Uh, more online presence, constantly communicating with our guests, with our, our clientele, with our customer base, but it's still not, that is still not enough. Remember, we are specialty uh, cuisine, so we have to now blend in more of Ghanaian dishes to make it more appealing to just make sure we can stay afloat, and that is still tasking. We're still working at the drawing board, still cracking the model and seeing what will best suit till the rest of the year, because it is going to be a long road coming. Restaurants are based on socializing and this COVID is antisocial. So you have to find a way to survive in an antisocial environment and health first. So stay away. Even though the lockdown was lifted, we've still not lifted our dine-in uh, option. It's still dine-out mm. only, pick up, delivery, and we're boost, trying to move that more to... Mm. Yeah, make some sense of it. <laughs> All right, making sense of everything. Madam Minister, I'd like to thank you so much for your time. Adnan, listen, I appreciate your time. Mr. Adnan, thank you. Travel and that's what I'll call you, then your real name. Kwame, thumbs up. Thank you so much for the time. I do appreciate it so much and have a, a good night. I don't know whether you'll be going to do some virtual DJing tonight. I don't know. Oh, Maybe. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay. 8 p.m. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll send the bill later. Okay. Well, all this too, we have to draw the curtain down. And I thank all my guests. Thank you so much for your time. And I believe that indeed that we have to do what we have to do to make sure that, listen, we will come, come back to enjoying our nightlife and our weekend parties and enjoying everything. Amen. Thank you so much. It has been Business Edition of PM Express. Bye-bye and enjoy the day.
Thank you.